Lance, you talk a lot to farmers about issues relating to how land prices have you know, gone, increased especially. Uh, but I'm interested in two, two in particular. One is interest rates. We know that affects land prices. Give me a bit of an idea from your perspective how significant that is and what the cautionary points are. Well, I guess, uh, you know, interest rates, you know, it's no secret, are historically very, very low, you know, uh, probably some of the lowest we've ever seen. Um, and that's been able to help farmers get land at a, a I don't want to say a cheaper price, but less overall cost because they're just that much less going into interest costs, uh, which is, you know, probably driven the price of land up. When they look at my overall payment is going to be this, and by my interest rates are so low, uh, I can pay a little bit more for the land. So that's driven the price of land up. Um, what might have been the other side of it, if you think of it from the seller's standpoint, what's possibly driven the price of land up as well is they're looking at where else am I going to put my money? If I'm going to take this cash out of the land, um, where am I going to put it? If I put it into a, like a similar low risk type of an investment, I'm looking at you know half to a 1% rate of return. Maybe I'm better to own my land or, or make that seller pay a, or purchaser, sorry, pay a little bit more so that I feel like I don't have to get a big investment return after the fact as well. So I think it, it plays on both sides of both the seller and the purchaser. Uh, definitely on the purchaser side, it's, it's, it's increased their cash flow because they're paying less interest costs. You actually mentioned that one of the factors impacting farmland is uh, local farmers making emotional buying choices. <laughs> Tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, far too often, uh, you know, and you can pick on farmers because they're the topic of discussion today, but you know, people sometimes make business decisions not for the right reasons. Uh, I'm not saying it's the wrong decision, uh, but they, they purchase the land and it's just because you know, they've, they've driven by that piece of land or they, uh, it maybe was owned in the family years ago and got moved or whatever, but they're buying it for simply emotional reasons. Um, are they, you know, they're not making any more land so I need to, to buy it when it becomes available. All those sorts of decisions might be the right decisions, but make sure that you understand the economics of it as well and all the other costs associated with it after that. Don't just go out and make a, a, a bid or a purchase on, those, on that alone. Let me ask you a question from a land seller's perspective. I'm, I'm getting older, I'm trying to decide, do I sell my land, do I, do I rent it, do I lease my land out? What would you say are my considerations? Uh, well, I think, like I already mentioned, uh, one is going to be the interest rates. You know, where am I going to invest my money? Uh, quite often you see people where they, um, and I, I asked, ask that question quite often, say, why did you, you know, why did you decide to sell or why didn't you decide to sell? And one might say, well, I decided to sell because I think the, inter the, the rates have kind of topped out. The, the land uh, prices aren't going to get much higher than this and I'm happy with that as a return uh, on my, my land investment and I'm going to cash in while I, I can. Uh, the other one is, what else am I going to do with my money? You know, if I, if I cash it out and I sell it for a million dollars, where am I going to put that money and what kind of return am I going to get? So it's, you know, they're looking at saying I can get a good rental return, uh, I can still maintain the value of my land, if the land prices continue to go up, I'm going to be able to capture that as well. Uh, so I'm just going to hold my land. So the interest rates, I think, have had an impact on them making that decision as well because there's just not um, decent returns for similar risk. You know, there, there'll be investment brokers and investment opportunities out there that, that offer or, or advertise you know, decent returns, but with that usually comes a lot more risk than that the, the owner would have with just owning their farmland. One thing I was interested in is the amount of effort certain farmers put in to relationships uh, with uh, people who own land. In other words, these guys were trying to rent land. One was, he was, uh, he was had a newsletter that he kept the, the yeah. landowner up to. Tell me about why is the relationship when renting a big deal? Well, I think it's key. I mean, most of these people are probably from the farming background. They've acquired the land, uh, you know, maybe they've never farmed themselves, but they their parents farmed, or maybe it's a retired farmer. And, uh, you know, keeping them in in the loop or keeping them informed of what's going on, they like that sort of information. Um, I think it also just builds a long-term relationship so that they understand the good years and the bad years yep. and they can work with you to make sure that uh, you know, you're both going to stay in business and both get decent returns over the career that you guys are going to share together type of thing. Um, so to me, relationships are a big part of, uh, of renting land. I don't want to be the person that's paying the highest land rent out there just for the sake of, own, of renting more land. I want to have a long-term relationship with that person and where we both can be, uh, feel good about owning the, or renting the land and making money on it. All right, always great. Appreciate the insight. No Thanks, problem. Lance. Thanks, Kevin.